Volker, could you could you tell us your, your name? Because I'm probably not pronouncing it quite right. No, that was pretty good actually. It's um, Volkart Müller. Okay. And I, I never get away just introducing myself. I always have to um, spell it, or you know, oh, I can't just say I, I am John. And no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll carry on. People can look it up because it's if they look if they go to the Ram website, they can find the spelling there. They, they can, yeah, yeah, that's right. So t- tell us a bit more about yourself and, and what's on at the Ram at the moment. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm an Exeter-based artist. Um, I've been living and working in the UK for the last ten years, and um, that is Exeter in specific, actually. So I'm also a local person, and um, I've got an exhibition on at the Royal Albert Memorial Museum at the moment. And um, the exhibition is called Annie High Street. It's also the title of the core piece of work in that exhibition, Annie High Street. So we might come on to the the other the other works that are there like, later on. But say so, say a bit more about how how it operates because when JD first went there, he, uh, I don't think the, the image was clear, but that is gradually being commissioned and stuck That's on right, a light yeah. screen. So it's 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 easier to see it all. Well, it's an accumulative piece of work, um, a work in progress, and the longer the piece has been at the gallery, the clearer, quite literally, the image becomes. I think it's reached a point now where the space is really self-explanatory, and I can gather that from audience feedback as well. People come in, and I don't, when I'm there, really have to explain it anymore because they really get what it's about. It's a work in progress. Um, essentially, there are three large woodcuts that are depicting Exodus High Street at three different times of day and night. And uh, through that, documenting, therefore documenting the changes on the high street over the course of 24 hours. Um, the images are based on three video films, which I've taken off the back of my bicycle. So I've literally cycled down the high street from the Odeon roundabout to the bottom of 4th Street with a camera on my bicycle rack all the way down and all the way up at three times of day and night. And from each of these films, I then chose one still image, um, a signature image, if you please, the most, you know, Characteristic or the best image that I could find from these films, and then produce that image onto very large wood plates, eight, uh, um, plywood plates, eight by four, sort of box standard building supplies plywood, as a woodcut. So a very very labour intensive process. Um, there is also elements of live drawings in there and research I've taken from photographies over about the course of a year. So that project I finished carving the plates in mid August after a total of about thousand working hours. So it's quite a medieval sort of scale <laughs> in terms of it's just actual labour. Um, what then happens is that uh, members of the public or visitors to the museum can commission sections of these plates for print, of these large woodcuts. Uh, they can choose the size, the format, be it a landscape or a portrait, um, and then they pay for it. Um, so from an entry level of sort of £2.50, so it's quite low entry level. It's all about inclusion, really. They pay for it, and each commission will be printed four times. One goes to the person who has paid for it, and one goes up on um, one of the big glass plates, illuminated light boxes, where all the individual commissions between them reassemble the overall image. So the, the woodcuts come t- together patch by patch by patch, sometimes overlapping um, on the glass plates, illuminated glass plates above the woodcuts. One really would have to see it, I think. Well, certainly, <laughs> and, it's, there, and it, it, it's not there for long now. Is that right? I mean, people listening now who haven't seen it have only got a week or so to see it. Is yeah, less than that actually. Um, the exhibition closes down on Saturday, so it's had a good three months run. Um, audience response been fantastic, um, and more so. The longer the exhibition is in the museum, I have to say. So, well, the, the clearer the images are. The clearer the images are, and um, I also suspect word of mouth has gone around. So we've had more and more people actually also commissioning large sizes. Um, some serious collectors coming, you know. Um, it all started on the, a lot of very very small prints that we took, and um, it's been progressively getting bigger the prints and the image therefore is assembling faster at a faster rate. And people who come to the museum now they will see. Um, something very different from those who came in the first weeks of the exhibition. Right, or if they're coming several times, they're seeing, they're seeing more. See it's growing each time. and growing and growing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I think the the the, the two aspects that you've mentioned are, are, are like ho- as influences would be Hogarth and uh, Weimar time illustration. 
So, and you also said that you introduced uh, models that you'd taken else, elsewhere. So the, some, some of the characters in, in the images that you put up don't, don't come from the video. They don't come from actual Exeter High Street. They're ones that you've added. Um, they do come from Exeter. Basically what I've done, I've spent about a year um, doing plenty of live drawings around public spaces in Exeter and just looking at situations and people and documenting them. Um, the core images are from the videos and then I would enrich some of them with characters that I've seen somewhere else on the street. But mostly they're very true to the actual video images. People coming to the exhibition can see that for themselves because there's also all the three video films on display. So they can be seen directly in relation to the to the printing plates. So they can really see. That's that's the moment. If they wait, you know, for 15 minutes, the length of each film, they will eventually see the image that is on the on each wood plate. But you, I think you've added something or selected something. And were you, were you thinking of 18th century London or thinking about Berlin uh, well, in the 20s when you represent Exeter as it is now? Well, the, the, the reference to there's a, there's a strand of German, German expressionism after the First World War in which artists, um, uh, there was a number of artists who depicted contemporary urban life through woodcut as a technique. And that's quite a striking thing, I think. It, um, it, um, just the nature of the woodcut, aesthetically as it presents itself, is, is quite an interesting medium to, 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 to capture such, such scenes. And um, I don't think it's happened in quite a while. Uh, least of all on, on such scale um, that somebody's done that and I so just, is, so just is found it, just it a highly appropriate sort of medium to, to follow through on that subject matter So is it the technique or is it, uh, when, so when you say any high street is, I mean, is it specifically Exeter High Street now or is it Berlin in the 20s or London in the 18th century um, That's the, the London 18th century thing that's the Hogarth thing isn't it there's a very particular work by William Hogarth which is I think it's called the, the four times of day and night or the, something like that the four the times of day in which he depicts um, the changes in um, in uh, how do you say in, in, in the street culture and in the, the populace the demographics what sort of people are out and about on the street at different times of day and night so there's a very direct reference to that he's done that beforehand and I was quite interested in the high street because it um, radically changes its demographic and its culture over the course of 24 hours it still seems to be quite similar in a way you know, there, there's something that, you know, you know it's, creates a relationship between Hogarth and, and what he looked at and what I'm looking at, you know. But I'm not using the same kind of, how to say, I'm not using a Hogarth style, you know. He was very much a cartoonist, I suppose, you know. Whereas my imagery is, is, quite, is quite different. I think people who come to the museum will see that themselves. You know, he, hasn't, he was an engraver as well, I believe, not, didn't do woodcuts or anything, you know. So, but there are definitely these two influences, and I think there are certain things it seems in the, in English culture that you know perpetuate themselves through the times. You know, if I look at some of the scenes that I've seen on the high street, say on a Saturday morning, it's quite Dickensian in some ways, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the imagery that presents itself to you sometimes, yeah. So I thought, yeah, fair enough. Okay, well, I think we'll break for some music now, and we'll we'll come come back and maybe talk about some of the other other works that are part of the show next time around.